Good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetric and Gynecology, Mansoura Faculty of Medicine. And this is my website, dralamusbah.blogspot.com, specialized in ob with many articles and many pictures of my operation. My topic today is very important, which is intrauterine fetal death. Let's start with our journey. What we wanted to discuss in this subject, definition and the incidence, etiology, diagnosis of intrauterine fetal death, investigations to detect the causes of intrauterine fetal death, complication of retained dead fetus, and management. Lastly, the protocol for examination of a stillborn infant. What about the definition and incidence? It is Antipartum death of fetus after 28 week gestation and before the onset of labor. The incidence 4 in 1000 and is more common in high risk pregnancy. And this is, of course, logic that high risk pregnancy exposed more to intrauterine fetal deaths. The fetal deaths are related to maternal in 5 to 10 percent and related to placental causes in 20 to 35 percent or fetal in 25 to 40 percent. As regards the etiology, idiopathic in 50 percent of cases, and this is the commonest. Placental and the court complications, congenital fetal anomalies, erythroblastosis fetalis, hypertensive diseases including preeclampsia, eclampsia, and essential hypertension, multiple pregnancy, medical complications like diabetes mellitus or systemic lupus or antiphospholipid syndrome. Intrauterine infection with toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, cephalus. Clinical findings. We will find history of the cause. When we are taking the history from the patient, we may find the cause. We will ask about the family and the obstetric history. Any occurrence of similar condition in the family or the patient herself had before intrauterine fetal death. The patient will tell us that she is lacking fetal movement. She cannot feel fetal movement today or two days ago or more. So it's something important. Absence of fetal heart sound and examination, regression of uterine size, Uterus is dewy in consistency. Difficult palpation of fetal parts due to absence of muscle tone, and this is expected with intrauterine fetal death. Malpresentation are common, yes. What about the investigation? Radiological, like X ray, we may see devil halo sign, halo around the fetal skull, angulation of the fetal spine. Spalding sign, overlapping of skull bones, hyperflexion of the fetus, no change in fetal position in serial x ray, rarefaction of fetal bones, Rupert sign in which there is gas in circulatory system. What about the ultrasound and the color doppler? Of course, it is conclusive. 
absence of fetal heart rate pattern. There is no fetal heart pulsation. Definitely diagnosed. Now fill the aorta. Skull collapse overlapping with skull bones and skull bedema. Empty fetal bladder. Retraction of brain tissue. This picture shows x-ray and ultrasound. And you can see the fetus here. This is the overlapping of the skull bone. Can you see it? It's clear. This overlapping of the skull bone. This is the spine of the baby in x-ray and angulation of the spine. What is very important in such cases, which is, is considered horrible and harmful to the mother, is to detect the causes of intrauterine fetal death. Because it is very important to manage if there is any cause lead to intrauterine fetal death, we want to manage and to prevent the occurrence of this again in the next pregnancy. So, we'll do PORCH studies for infection, serology, and culture if needed. Culture for listeria, E. coli, and the group B. streptococci. Karyotyping, photography, and fetal autopsy. Blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C for diabetes. Lupus anticoagulant and the anticardial IB and the antinuclear antibody for antiphospholipid syndrome. Thrombophilia screening by antithrombin protein C S factor 5 within mutation and factor 2 mutation. Anti DTET and the chlorophyll test for RH incompatibility or sensitivity. Maybe the patient is sensitized because she is RH negative and the baby is RH positive. So, what is the complication of retained dead fetus? If the baby is dead and they retain maternal distress, of course, there is a psychological problem with, with this case, in this situation. Infection, if the membrane is ruptured. Coagulopathy may occur if the fetus is retained for long time, maybe four weeks or more. So what is the management? Termination of pregnancy is done either by induction of labor or by cesarean section if there is contraindication for vaginal delivery. So the indication or method of delivery depend on obstetric indication and which is more safe to the mother okay the patient if presenting with coagulopathy in labor or she is in active bleeding we must replace this blood loss by blood transfusion or cryoprecipitate or fresh frozen plasma or all of them this is followed by delivery of the dead fetus and the try when you diagnose intrauterine fetal death not to wait for a long time because of the hazards as regard to the mother psychologically and medical problem like coagulation defects may happen if the dead fetus retained for a long time. So when we diagnose, we should start termination and don't wait. Psychological aspect and counseling. This is a traumatic event. Yes, of course. It's horrible. Postpartum depression may occur. And anxiety can happen in many patients. And the patient may need psychotherapy. So it's something very important. And the breaking bad news in such a case 
it's very important because loss of the baby is not an easy for the mother so what is the protocol for examination of a stillborn in infant infant description will search for malformations skin staining degree of maceration color pale glyceric What about the umbilical cord? Entanglement of the umbilical cord around the neck, arms, or legs, hematomas or structures, number of vessel, maybe there is single umbilical artery. We know that the, um the umbilical cord contains two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. Sometimes there is one umbilical artery in a congenital anomalous. So we should know the number of vessels in the umbilical cord. Length of the cord, is it too long or too short? Because both of them carry hazards. Quartan jelly, normal, absent, or whatever. Of course, don't forget that presence of true note is something also very important while you are examining the umbilical cord. What about amniotic fluid? The color stained with meconium or blood, consistency, volume. What about the membranes? Meconium state or cloudy, sickening, and this is the placenta. And you can see in this picture, there is true note here. This is the placenta in a case with intratrifical death, and this is, can you see the stained membrane and the umbilical cord, and there is a true, a true note here, which was struck the blood which is going to the fetus. Stoppage of the blood, sudden stoppage of the blood to the fetus cause intravitical death, of course. Placenta, what is the weight of the placenta? Stained by meconium or not, like this picture. Adherent clots, edema or hydrobic changes, sometimes some diseases those hydrobic changes like erythroplasmosis, fetalis, like syphilitic placenta. Structural abnormalities is it circumvallate placenta or there is accessory loops, filamentous insertion of the cord, or any other abnormalities? So, in summary, we discussed today the definition and the answers of intrauterine fetal death, the etiology, the diagnosis of intrauterine fetal death through clinical finding and the investigation by ultrasound and Doppler and X-ray if needed, investigation to detect the causes of intrauterine fetal death, and we said it is very important, complication of retain the dead fetus and why it is hazardous for the mother to leave the dead baby inside for a long time and we should do termination early as soon as possible when we diagnose the death of the baby. Management and the protocol of examination of the stillborn infant and this is the last slide. Thank you Professor Ala Musbah Professor of Obstetric and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University, blogspot.drala.musbah.blogspot.com. Thank you.